Hey guys, welcome back. We're at it again. I'm going to reveal some more of my parts. So one of the things that's always fascinated me with found parts is how exotic and amazing they are and how they come from the world of photography which the normal layman would never have um, seen these objects and the world of aviation and obviously we all know the story about George Lucas bonging John Mollow a load of money and him going by in a big pile of junk of all this exotica these really interesting shapes, parts and bits and pieces so I don't quite understand what went wrong with the Sand Trooper backpack. Here we have a toilet system, a toilet siphon from an old, I'm guessing these were pretty commoner garden, uh, commoner garden items. Uh, but there it is, somebody deemed that interesting enough to place onto the Sand Trooper backpack. Um, it's rubbish, isn't it? I mean, I did recognize, this is one of the pieces that I did recognize from the get-go. This is a Shires branded toilet siphon, or cistern, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a plumber. Although, I'm used to fiddling with a bit of pipe work. Made in England. So at one point these were just common garden in toilets everywhere. Nice, I like that. There was a story kicking about how they used to have the taps in an exhibition centre which were from the Obi-Wan hilt and when this was discovered by the end of the weekend's events all the taps had been removed from the toilets. I don't know if that was a true story, I wasn't part of it. I like to think it did happen. But then, at the same time, maybe that'd be wrong. So, if you're going in anywhere that's got an old toilet, just lift that lid, take a peek, maybe you've hit the jackpot. Just for those who are commenting now at the screen, saying, oh, but you didn't mention those two sizes. There are two sizes, 100 and a 90. This is a 100 variant. I think it's probably slightly more common, but having said that, maybe they're just as common as each other in. Who even cares? This is a hundred version. So there you go, that's the Shire's toilet siphon as seen on the Sand Trooper backpack. Um, probably the least exciting of all found parts. But I may be wrong. If I am, please comment below and let me know. Maybe I'll try and find that part two. Maybe I'll probably already have it. And maybe I'll just expose it. So you want more? Shall we up the ante? Shall we like push it up to the next level? If that isn't excitement, I don't know what is. This is a very smelly rubber plunger top dome. Yeah, I used to have the, at the time we bought like, I don't know, quite a quantity of them and they were just taking up far too much room so we unscrewed them, threw the sticks away. One's up here, one's down here. Okay, it's not too exciting. We're not up there, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna add to just pep this video up a bit? How about this? This is a Tupperware jug, I would call it, when I was a kid. I remember having these in the fridge and getting my um, squash out of it. Now we don't need this bit. God, it's like childproof again. We don't need this bit. What we need is this bit. And to be fair, we don't even need all of this. But there you go. Let's see it on the pack. Here it is. Wow, how amazing is that? So you can see we're building up a picture here of just utter tat that was used. There's nothing exotic here. A jug, plungers, toilet. Where's the exciting stuff? This is obviously coupled with backing plate for a somewhat of a grinder, which this is what it looks like. This is where you can buy them. We're still not there, are we? We're still not. Let's add something to the mix. So what I can... No, secretive stuff in there. So this is a Brexton sandwich box. This is one on the actual pack. Now I don't think this is 100% accurate, but there's a couple, it's, it's not been 100% identified. This is probably just about the best one that we've got to date. 
So there you go, there's a sandwich box on the pack. It's not, it's still not exciting, is it? Let's talk about... Jesus, Paul's banging his head on the wall again. <laughs> I'm going to move these out of the way. I mean, if you look at this thing, not only is it a collection of really lacklustre parts, some bottles, sandwich bottle, toilet thing, more bottles, it's really badly made as well. It's just thrown together and it's that, even on set, it's falling apart. According to the book, John Mollo's responsible for this, but looking at the build quality, I think they may have got some intern or some trainee. Let's amp it up a little bit. Let's have a look at this. Look at this old school. This just, this is just 70s to me, isn't it? Late 70s, early 80s. This is what it's all about. It's actually not a bad little, uh, little pack, is it? Yeah. This is just carry more. Your good old commoner garden carry more. Like the patriotism. Someone's gone to the trouble of sewing a, sewing a union flag on there. Like it. So, this was the frame. All of this needs to come off. How do we get this off? Okay, fast forward this bit. Don't need that. So, what we're left with is this. I don't know, this little tie here for putting, putting something on. Don't need that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to undo these because they're probably really knotted. But we've got these two red stretchers stay on there and the, the pack itself. Now this is a little tall. This this is going to get cut down. But there you go, there's the basic the basic frame that was used or we believe was used for the Sand Trooper backpack. And it's the Carrymore K2 pack frame. There you go. So there's the pack frame. <coughs> All right, let's talk about Jewel in the Crown, the most exciting thing on the pack, and probably the most sought after thing for many, many years. The most exciting thing on the pack, in my opinion. And it was a thing that, I wouldn't say we doubted it existed, but they just were impossible to find. What am I talking about? The Sonex. I can't actually read it. What's it called? Sonex Victory something? Holy moly. Check it out. Check out the check out that dial. Volume. It's got that little turn when things used to do that. There it is. Look. Look at the state of it. The myth. The holy grail. The thing we thought we'd never find. This is actually now the third one that's arrived in the community. I may be wrong, there may be more. Please comment below if you know different. There's only one of these radios that's ever been molded. That was the first one that we bought. I'm gonna give you a little overview of the of the whole radio and then we'll talk about it. So as you can see, we've got the front, we've got the speaker. It's kind of a military style radio, but it's not anything to do with the military. It's just the style of it. It's like, I don't know, for kids or, I don't even know what the hell it's for. Music or, tone control for music or for voice radio on AM. We've got the band selector for AM, FM. Now this one is damaged slightly. The, the little protruding part of, the, of this switch has been snapped off at some point. We've got this amazing dial, which is, which is a thing that always draws my attention. It's the military style. This is supposed to look like some sort of compass or something and um, Totally pointless. Let's have a look at the, we've got a carry strap, which is connected through these uh, details on the side. This is all mashed up. It should just lay nice and flat. Let's try and encourage it to do so. This is, this was removed on the, um, on the actual pack. They cut this off. Uh, it's got this wrap, leather wrap all around the, the radio itself. We've got a, uh, what's, what's this, a five pin XLR or something? Yeah, we've also got a mic in here and ear. So that must be for the headphone. Um, yep, yeah, then we've got that detail. Then we've got the four little feet that it sits on on the bottom. 
But wait, we've got more. Let's have a little look. We can open the back up here. This is also this is also for the speaker I'm assuming. So in here we've got a space to put um, batteries. It's just so look how shit it is. It's so shit. So let me take let me remove this. So you can put batteries in this. When you use batteries, it takes these big ones. What are these ones? The same as your butt plug D's. Um, D cell. Yeah, I think it is. It's four of them. Yeah. Your dildo takes eight. It does, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it takes a load of batteries, and then interestingly enough, it just connects with one of these uh, nine volt um, connectors on there. Then, this is the, can you see that? Position for the cord. So, if you unplug it, you can stow away the plug and the cord and everything inside of there. But this feels like, I mean, this, this back plate is plastic, but this this is cardboard. The general build quality, if I was doing an unboxing of this video now, I'd say the general build quality is very poor, is how I'd describe it. It's an awful, real cheap transistor radio made in Hong Kong, which we all know back then meant China. So, there you have it. It's still an amazing piece. It was more expensive than you could possibly believe. It's the perfect thing to finish off an accurate found parts backpack. It's a nice piece. It's very rare. Like I say, we've found three of these. One original one has been molded to my knowledge to date. That's the first one that we did with our good friend, the Woodman, who is a sand trooper aficionado. And there you go. So there's one last thing before we go that we really must do. Let's try this out. Oh. So there you go, there she is, in the flesh, the original Sonics Victory 75, still in tip top working condition. So that's it for this time, thanks for looking at my parts, of which there have been many. If you want to learn more about the Sand Trooper backpack, you're not going to have to wait too long because we are putting another video up very soon and we're going to walk through the replica pack and talk about the details and explain why we're so proud of it so for now thanks for watching and you have been looking at some more of my parts